Now we have seen that <clears throat> that <clears throat> in each in each orbital there must be two electrons. Only two are allowed. But the formal formal reason why that should happen is due to the Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that that there cannot be any two electrons with the same set of all the four quantum numbers, right? So, so that immediately sets the limitation on the number of electrons in an in an orbital, right? So, so it says that that no two electrons, no two electrons, no two electrons in an atom can have in an atom can have the the same set of all the four quantum numbers have the same set of all the four quantum numbers can have the same set of all the four quantum numbers right now how does that that restrict things right so so let us let us try to see if i have if i have an n here and, and an l corresponding l here and an m here and an s here then then let us try to see so n is equal to 1 my l can only be be zero because it goes from zero to n minus one and, and this goes from minus l to plus l through zero so this is also zero so so one zero zero now now in this orbital that has nlm as one zero zero there are two possibilities of plus half and n minus half right and minus half now for for because if there is a third one, let us say this had one s orbital had the third electron, then then what happens to the spin of it? It is it is let's say the third one is either plus half or minus half. Now if it is plus half, then there are two electrons which have the same set of NLMS all the four quantum numbers right you see that yes. so if I have if I have a plus half spin then I have two electrons with n equal to one zero zero plus half and and, and and other one also is the same identical right or instead of this instead of this if I had minus half then there will be two electrons one this and one this having the same set of quantum numbers 1 0 0 minus half right minus half now that is what is excluded now the moment it gets excluded the 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 number of electrons in this 1s orbital gets restricted to 2 right so so for n is equal to 2 there is an l which is 0 and then there is an l which is 1 so there is an m that goes from minus l to plus l through 0 and then there is a plus half here and only a minus half can be accommodated so 2 0 0 plus half 2 0 0 minus half and, and this stands for s so in 2s orbital <coughs> right in 2s shell right which is also 2s orbital you'll have 2 now here you have minus 1 and, and 0 and, and 1 so 2 1 minus 1 will also allow plus half and minus half plus half and minus half 2 1 0 will also be plus half minus half 2 1 1 is also plus half and minus half <coughs> and no more do we see that okay it should be pretty readily understood right this this 
and that, this and that, this and that. So the orbitals are <coughs> r. Orbitals are the 2px. This is 2px. This is 2py. This is 2pc. Right? Correct. So, so the same exclusion principle can alternately be be expressed as as this that <coughs> that not more than two electrons can exist in an orbital and that too both of them will have opposite spin right so only two electrons only two electrons can exist in the same orbital can exist in the same orbital and these two must have opposite spins and these two must have the opposite spins right because if they do not have opposite spins let us say let us say e, e, we, there are two and this also is up then what happens plus half and plus half they they kind of match so it becomes one zero zero plus half and then minus half right that's why they have to be opposite in their spin Now that indeed, that indeed imposes a restriction on the number of electrons, right? So, so we see this and this, right? So, 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 so we had seen these were the orbitals, right? So how many orbital? One orbital here. And each has two electrons, so so two electrons, right? One orbital, two electrons. Here, here, here. Total, I have, I have four orbitals, right? Four orbitals, and how many electrons? Eight electrons, right? So so I have how many orbitals in each shell? n square right so number of orbitals in each shell is n square so number of orbitals in each shell is n square so number of electrons in each shell becomes 2n square because each orbital contains only two electrons as per Pauli's exclusion principle. Correct? Can you tell me the number of shells in a given, in number of subshells in a given shell? Okay. Number of subshells in a given shell. Number of subshells in a shell okay how many how many how many subshells it is equal to n what is the subshell subshell is the values of l okay so so how many of them are there here there is one, right? Here you have two. In the third shell you have 0, 1, 2, n, right? So you have n subshells. n subshells. How many orbitals? n square. How many electrons? 2 n square. Don't ever get confused. Okay, they all have different connotations. So, 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 
again, I'm, I'm again emphasizing that this represents shell. Shells. This represents subshells. And this represents orbitals. Okay, whatever is the number here, that is the number of orbitals. So there are four orbitals here. Okay, there is one orbital here. Okay, there is one subshell here. There are two subshells here, right? This and this. Okay, 2s and 2p are the subshells. Fine. Now, as you increase the number of electrons, okay, as we increase the number of electrons, how do they get filled? Okay, you understand? How do they get filled? So, so let us say, let us say, let me give you an example. That let us say I, I talk about hydrogen. How many electrons? One. Okay, electrons. How many electrons? One. So, 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 what happens? One should go to. One should go to the one s orbital, right? So, so kind of this. I'm showing orbitals by a box, right? This is called orbital diagram. If I, if I decide to show it by a box, this is called an orbital diagram. Orbital diagram fine diagram we will come back to it in, in quite some detail later I'm, I'm just trying to give you a, a glimpse of what what we are trying to explain so so it is that now come to helium okay so so helium has two electrons so we have just said that each orbital has I know two and both will be opposite this is how we show the opposite up and down right now we come to lithium what happens to lithium? Three electrons. What happens? It has to go to the second shell. The second shell of higher energy. So, so this was 1s. This is 2s. Right? This is 2s. So one electron goes there. How about beryllium? Four electrons. Right? So what happens? For beryllium, we have... 1s, 2s, and next, boron is 5, right? Boron is 5. So, so I have, I have 1s. I could have kind of copied it. Okay, let me copy this. Okay, and let me copy this. Let me copy this. keep on pasting it instead of always writing that so I have this I, I'm, I'm more bothered about about what happens later so so 2p now 2p has has one box which is 2p x another box which is 2p y and another box which is 2p z right to be Z so so fine I'll, I'll again pop it I don't know so that I do not have to make this diagram again and again so so now the the next electron goes to to this right now we we again go to to carbon now you'll face a problem a dilemma right now the dilemma is this is this fine this is 1s2 2s2 
the next electron is here. Now where does the next electron go? 2px according to the Pauli's exclusion principle is capable of, of, of allowing the other electron. So does it go to 2px or it could have as well gone to it could have as well gone to 2py. Understand? So you understand what, what we are trying to say? Yes. We are trying to say that the the next when the next electron goes, okay, let me again paste it. So 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 when the next electron goes, how does it how does it go from so so this was till boron so the next electron goes like like this that it pairs in the 2px obviously up with the down or it goes here you see these are two possibilities these are two possibilities correct understand so so this is a dilemma this is a dilemma. This or this, which? And it had to be resolved. Fine? Now you'll find one thing <coughs> that beginning from the off-bow principle, we have been saying that the the electrons should go in such a way that the energy of the energy of the atom remains the minimum right it remains the least we get that point correct now one thing that 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 should strike you is that if these are vacant and they are of the same energy because we had already said that that when we when we go to the same subshell, the energy is the same, right? We we go to the same subshell, the energies are the same. So we were bothered about the Ns and Ls, right? Not the Ms, right? So Ns and Ls, N plus L, it depends on the energies depend on N plus L. But each L, okay? You understand? L for each L, those 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 orbitals they are degenerate understand we had only talked that from 1s the next will be 2s and the next will be 2p and the next will be 3s we never said we never said that after 2 after 2s there will be 2px then 2py then 2pz so what does it mean that all those three orbitals here they are at the same energy they are at the same energy level and that is why this confusion comes in. Understand? Had they been also non-degenerate, that means their energies would also have been varying, then we would have no problem. Then we would have put our next electron in the, in the one that had lesser amount of energy and preferably maybe 2px. But that is not the case. So, so what do we do? Now, now you you feel one thing that putting it here Okay, I am not talking about a box, but, but putting it in this orbital confines it to move with an electron that is already there. Right? And electrons, electrons will, will repel each other. They have got repulsive forces. They are light charged, both negatively charged. Okay? So forcing two repelling things to move will require more energy than if they were separated by some distance. Understand? So, so if they are confined, say, in, in a small track, or, or if the tracks are different, so, so, take, so putting them in 2py kind of, kind of ensures that they are farther apart and, that, and, I'm, and I'm not forcing them. 
and I'm not forcing them to move together in the same orbital. Forcing them to move in the same orbital must require more energy due to their repulsive due to the repulsive nature of the forces. We get the point? Due to the repulsive nature of the forces. So, so this should require more energy. Okay? It should require more requires it requires more energy and this requires less energy so so we have we, we kind of come to the conclusion that if the next one goes it is better that it goes to go to the next orbital so 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 that is that that's carbon for you now now the question comes how about nitrogen how about nitrogen so so nitrogen is again the the same case isn't it the nitrogen is again the same case so so for for nitrogen you have seven so one goes here okay uh, i'll use the different color right so one goes here as earlier the next one had had gone there so so this dilemma is gone right we are now pretty confident that this is the correct one this is how it should go and this is now not how it should go so the next one should go somewhere somewhere here so again I have available uh, another one available so if the next electron comes in the seventh it should go there okay now what happens if the eighth one comes in so that is oxygen for you, isn't it? That's oxygen for you, and I and I again paste it. Okay. So what happens? What happens is is this was there, this was there, this was there. Okay. Now, now for the first time, this pairing starts like that, right? It should then be forced to go to 2px because it still has one vacancy. Going to 3s, going to 3s will require more energy. 3s is at a higher energy level. So it's better to pair it than to send it to a higher energy level. Though this will also require some energy. Okay, but, but that energy seemingly is less than the energy that is required to put it in 3s orbital. Right? So, so this has got a formal name. What, what we reasoned out right now was, was discovered by, by, by a fellow called Hunt. Okay, and it is named as Hunt's rule of Hunt's rule of maximum. multiplicity Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity and let us try to see what do they say so, so, so the first thing that that's there about this this rule is that it pertains to it pertains to filling of filling of the electrons of the electrons into the orbitals into the orbitals belonging to the same into the orbitals belonging to the same subshell orbitals belonging to the same same subshell right we, we, we have just now seen that that this is a subshell okay this is one subshell 2s is one subshell 2p is one subshell and and all the all the orbitals of the same subshell are degenerate Right? 
which are which are degenerate and by degenerate we mean not that it has decayed or something it means that is they that is of equal energy that is what it means there is no negative connotation attached to it okay so that is of equal energy okay so so that dilemma is sought to be removed by this it states that the pairing of electrons in the orbitals belonging to the same subshell does not take place until each orbital belonging to that subshell has got one electron each that is it is singly occupied okay so so let me write that that seems to be a big definition but but it essentially reflects what we have already done so it should not be difficult it says that okay that the pairing uh, so so it states that states that that the pairing of electrons of electrons in the orbitals in the orbitals belonging to belonging to the same same subshell subshell p d or f we are not including f why because that subshell does not have a confusion because it can only accommodate two and you're over right you do not have that confusion in s so that's why it is it, it's, it's not there it's not there right it's dropped in the, uh, it states that pairing of electrons in the orbitals belonging to the same subshell does not take place does not take place does not take place until until each orbital belonging to that each orbital belonging to that subshell to that subshell that subshells not not subshells belonging to that subshell has got has got one electron each okay until it has one electron each that is it is singly occupied that is it is singly occupied apostrophe ends the quote ends right and it is pretty commonsensical why it should be doing the prime concern is energy the pairing energy that you'll again come across when we are doing the coordination compounds and you'll see that at times it is okay for the molecule to jump jump the orbital and at times it is okay for it to pair get paired so 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 that that will come to later but but then this is what it is and if you apply these laws the off bow principle so off bow principle the off bow of bow and Pauli's exclusion Pauli's exclusion and and the hunch rule then 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 you will be able to to exactly predict the electronic configuration okay and that's what we'll do the next <laughs> right so so in p orbitals until and unless let me let me elaborate a bit until and unless it, it fills all the three the pairing won't start as you saw here right in a d orbital a d orbital consists of of five boxes isn't it and and five 
we got six boxes, right? So, so, so not required. We do not require the sixth one. Okay, so we do not require the sixth one. This one, this is this is D already, right? This is D. Now what happens? So it starts filling up, starts filling up, okay, and it goes up, 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 next, up, next, up, and then and only when the sixth electron comes, then it starts pairing. So sixth goes there, seventh goes there, eighth goes there, ninth goes there, tenth goes there, right? Similarly with with f, right? Similarly with with f orbitals. This is this is d orbital, right? So if if we're dealing with the f orbital, it will be similar. So again the filling will be like this, then this will get filled, then this will get filled, this gets filled, this gets filled, this gets filled. Only after all the seven have been filled does come the number of the first one and it starts getting paired. Right? It starts getting paired like that. We get that. Fine.